Let me start with a story. And I told you this is one of these stories that I'm going to take to not a blasphemy, but uh, it's part of my experience. You know, in Nigeria today, there are three institutions in governance. We have the executive, we have the legislature, and we have the judiciary. When the military come, as they used to come, or will never come again, we have the executive and the judiciary remaining. For the legislature, it's always the arm that is dislodged. And so, when you've been in government for some time, you will realize that the legislative arm of government do not have people that are well developed to meet the aspirations of governance. And when I came in 2007, one of the areas I thought I could improve on their competence is the legislative arm. So we designed programs to build our legislators. Uh, one of the programs designed was for them to go to the UK to have some legislative experience. And so we sent a group of our legislators to the UK. A reporter called, I think the speaker or somebody in the theater, how much did it the state government to send this book to the UK? Uh, the, the response he got, I hear, was not actually the response. That for sometimes, when it comes to ask questions, I make a response. There's 400 million to the state to the UK. Many Deltas were angry and justifiably so. One was so angry was a professor in Lagos University that he wrote a vicious article in the Guardian. Of course, that article was to blast the Deltas' government for wasting 400 million on selling the Deltas in the UK. And uh, there's something about Zig that I always remember. Zig says, you must respond to every misinformation in the media. No matter how small it is, you must respond to it. And how you correct it, one way or another, you must respond to it. So we responded to this professor. I'm happy to the professor said to me. So we responded to him, took a full page advance, condemning the publication, condemning the reporter, and uh, the debater died there after. A few years later, I was close. He came to give a guest lecture. I think I knew where. Uh, program and I was there and I listened to him. Um, it was an actual video. Today is my commissioner for higher education. He responded like that because he was misinformed by a report. I just thought I should give that as a practical experience of some of the things. We are going to discuss here today. Uh, from the program, I have about uh, 30 or 40 minutes. So I'm going to abridge what, what I will say. Secondly, because this is about the media, I found this paper to document whatever you say. <laughs> so that uh, when somebody disposes you, uh, you have your paper to show. But, because of the time, there are some aspects I might not treat, I might just talk to them, uh, knowing and hoping that uh, nobody will be spooked me. If you spooked me, I wasn't denying it. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, 
Hapo hiki media democratic governance and the challenges of national development. I'll take the, 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 the issues one by one in form of definition and explanation. First, the media. The media or the mass media represents an entire spectrum through which communication gets society in high numbers, with some instantaneously and the experience enjoyed across borders of tongues, beliefs, class and clan about the same time, whether as individuals or as groups. The components of the mass media are newspapers, magazines, radio, television, films, theater, billboards, and the internet. The internet deserves special attention because of what it has become and the uses it has been put to. For instance, the events in the Arab world owe so much to the internet. The internet has a great place in the Tunisian report agitations in other Arab countries. And back up in Nigeria, all the occupied places, occupied programs were made possible and are graduated through the internet. The internet therefore in a way fits the proper definition of the mass media because the messages are available to everyone who can gain access no matter the time the person decides to become part of the media experience. Other categorizations of the media include the cinema and mass media messages through the cell phone or the SMS. In Nigeria, with more than like 7 million mobile phone subscribers, a figure expected to top 1.8 million by 2014, the use of portable mobile telephone devices for mass messages is a different phase of mass communication, which is changing media consumption habits. Um, Sometimes towards the end of last year, one of our top places in Delta died. And uh, what I got in touch with, somebody was quite close to him. Um, because I got information a few days after the death. He said, Oh, they will not make the announcement yet until the family meeting says, Go to Akhara before they make the announcement. So I said, Ah, come on. Uh, if you don't make the announcement early, I will show you that in the next one has full internet will be full of that information. So we have moved from an era in which we used to say, okay, we can delay an information to so now an era in which we have to preempt mischievous elements on the internet by first of bringing out the correct information. Uh, it, it's something and I, and I tell my because don't say, oh, I want to kill a story. In those days, it was possible to kill a story in the media, but I don't think it's possible to kill any story now. You know, instead, uh, attack the story, preempt what, what, whatever the internet will do the story. Whether the powers of the media are stated or not, the fact is they are there, and the influence that media will to the various audiences that they reach is a strong demonstration of its power. From what I know, the media writers appeal this power, not appeal this power better than the Chicago Tribune, one of America's foremost newspapers. His credo drops hints about the enormous power the media control. And what is that? It says, the newspaper is an institution developed by a modern civilization to present the news of the day, to foster, to foster commerce and industry, to inform and lead public opinion, and to punish that check of one government, which no constitution has ever been able to provide, based on its cargo to be unfilled. This view is probably true for the electronic media. The other Nigerian media organizations have their credos, which in many cases are not very different from the one for the world. The summary is that many media organizations have promised to work for society's needs and their own understanding. Of this group. Please let me emphasize their own understanding of this group. The Nigerian media also has a concerning assigned role, which says the press, radio, television, and other agencies of the mass media shall at all times be free to uphold the fundamental objectives contained in this chapter and uphold the 
responsibility and accountability for the government to give this is our area control of the life. At the same time, the role that the media created for themselves is called the agenda setting role for the media. The expectation is that the media will selflessly look at issues that are important to society and focus attention on them with the intention of mobilizing resources to tackle the issues. The media applies this role to a broad spectrum of issues, social issues, sports, political, and economic. Now, we we'll go to the second part of democratic governance. Perception plays a great role in public appreciation of democratic governance. Where the end of the public drums of this perception from the media. Democratic governance is a product of political and administrative processes that are rooted in giving practical wins to democracy and popularly defined government of people, by the people, and for the people. In that position, we have the security and the wealth of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Interpretations of these obligations and orders that the Council dictates are partially responsible for ways inside the race democratic governance. But I also think there are other important reasons, and I suppose we all see the world differently and no more sees it completely. Any philosophers compare the human mind to a blank tablet on which impressions are imprinted. Today, we know that potential is not a passive state in which similar are received and for banker register. On the contrary, perception is an active process in which you as the perceiver select, organize and interpret what you experience. Nobody discusses media, democratic governments, and other development, or any other subject for that matter with a blank mind. There are some preloaded impressions about issues on everyone's mind. In this now, the short is years to further information on governance because of this perception. In this now, they be more interested in my own language than the verbal communication. In this now, they be occupied with the presenter rather than the presentation. His interest may range even further. His mind be filled with issues that are not bearing at all to this guy. The profound application of perception and its rules in management of relationships between the media and governments to serve both parties well as I just tried to have a look at. And where the base of perception of our press room is important, as the government will always engage the media, we have encountered the media with its unique challenges, with prime moments, difficulties, and stresses. For me, my gain of our collective sources will be how quickly. Both are able to deepen our understanding of high important societies and traditions, which are often understated. The base persists about the feasibility of democracy, led itself to the massive application. On this, I found one perspective that argues that we should not see democracy as a quick fix for our national challenges. Interesting. And this argument was put on by Lee Kuan Yew. I align with you that people will value honest, effective, and efficient government. Still, none of it is a substitute for democratic governance because it will be more difficult attaining them under a system of governance that does not lean on the principle of fairness, justice, and liberty. If I go, let me put a record. That uh, yes, the was the father of uh, modern Singapore, but uh, uh, I think the people also think that the was a was a civilian dictator, and uh, he was very oppressive on the press. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, the press in Nigeria would like what the Pai did to the press in Singapore, but what he did to help Singapore to develop. Now, the United Nations Development Program, NDP, which dedicated $1.6 billion last year to building democratic governance, makes about the same point but adopts democracy in the context of the EU. Democracy can be exported or imposed. It must come from the will of the people. The rest of us can support nations on the path 
that lay out for themselves which their expatriation for equity and using this and empowering. It then makes sense to talk of political democracy, as I say, in this part. National development. National development can be described as a scheme of organized mass scale expenditure on mainly national infrastructure targeted on areas that bear a big mark for development. An example is the seven year republic, seven year republic of Ireland plan that is in the same office that ends in 2013. And I quote on that plan. The current plan involves spending 70 million euro every day. 70 million euro every day from 2007 to 2013. And this translates to 178.85 billion euro. The main element of the original plan was the development of the National Motorway Network between the major cities in the Republic of Ireland. The upgrading of the rail network on the secondary scale. I've set up for this example to show the type of resources countries are deploying to building critical infrastructure. The point I try to make here is how much money that countries are deploying to build Critical infrastructure. Today, every airports across the world are being constructed. Five hundred billion dollars or five hundred hydro um, is under five. Five hundred million dollars, three hundred million euro. But in Nigeria. When you spend 20 billion naira on an airport, people are shouting, it's inflated. Before I come to the main issue, let me first of all just briefly tell you what our strategy is as a state. Now, the biggest challenge that we have today in Delta, in Nigeria, and I think across the world, is the issue of ensuring that our people are gainfully employed. The issue of empowerment, the issue of poverty and addiction, the issue of ensuring that our youth have one thing or the other to do. But in doing that, we must ensure that we create avenues for employment. We look at our economy as a state, over 90% like dependent on oil. That's the same economy we have in Nigeria. And so we came up with the strategy of how do we deal with it. Let us use the money from oil to develop the non-oil sector. So that tomorrow, when we do not have oil, we see how our economy moves. There are countries across the world that do not have one drop of oil. Yes. They have some of the best economies in the world. And that is why we developed a strategy that we said that we turned Delta beyond oil. Initially, we had said the Delta without oil, but um, on review, we said Delta beyond oil. And what does that mean? Let us build critical infrastructure, let us build human resources that will encourage investors to come in, that will encourage industries to come in. And when such industries come in, they are able to engage our youth. Industries, small, medium, or large industries, they are able to employ our youth, they are able to engage our youth. And when our youth are engaged, the pool of youth that are left to be recruited for similar activities is very much reduced. And when that is reduced, we believe that humanity, in every form, that pay our robbery will be reduced in society. So that is our strategy, and that is a strategy we have a portion. We are also, as part of our uh, dealing with poverty, we also have low value things. Because attracting in, in big industries can take up to five, four, five years. Uh, we have our own hanging food, which is a micro credit scheme, uh, which Alex has uh, uh, described in uh, one's review. Uh, we also have our other social facilities, 
of pharmaceutical programs in the health sector, in the education sector, to, to ensure that we have a well built up human capacity uh, society. And in planning that human capacity, we look at human being from the day of conception to the day you enter your degree. We have a program from the day of conception, program from the day of birth, from the day you start school, you enter school, you enter university, for your work, working life. The work we have not perfected is the work for the old people. But from the day the husband and the wife, they meet that night, and by the next morning, the woman knows that she's pregnant. Um, <laughs> we have a program for you, and that means you are entitled to a free maternal health care service. You might not appreciate that, but I'll tell you a story. Um, as a young doctor practicing in the Delta Symphony, I was called to face a, a delivery that became a problem. And what did I find? When I got there, I saw a woman lying with her legs open with a child dangling from the legs, the legs, the bottom of the legs, the tummy, the chest, the hands of the baby had come out, but the hand, head was trapped into the woman's, uh, was still trapped in the woman's way. Of course, what is the story? The story was that this woman was pregnant, did not register in the hospital because she didn't have money to do so. When she was in labor, she went to the hospital and she was driven from the hospital because she didn't have a car and she didn't have the money to pay for even the delivery. So, of course, the next thing she could do was to go to a native uh, place. And, uh, of course, this doctor seeing that the child was working with the focus started dragging that child. And in dragging that child, dragging another parts out, except the head. And some women who have been here, they, they know the people uh, who can have what I'm saying. They said the head. And, of course, the head became trapped. And the child had been so dragged, the child died to start with. The neck had become so thin like this, uh, because the child had been dragged in a long way. And, uh, of course, we had to uh, ensure that the mother survived. That's why I'm moving here. This other part of the body, I'm trying to pull the head to bring out the baby. Um, that happened because this woman did not have money, and that child, well, this was 1984. Um, that child would have been somebody today. We are probably the graduates preparing to be one of their dances, or preparing to be the president of, of, of Nigeria. And so, when I had the opportunity, one of the first things I did was to ensure that every pregnant woman has access to the hospital. But to get to the government hospital, you should not pay the couple. Even those who have the money getting pregnant, even those who have the money getting pregnant, it's also a free service for them. We've been running this program for about four or five years, about four years now, and then we have very good returns. Sometimes we have challenges with those managing the program. But generally, uh, we have to return to the program. I'm emphasizing this to show that there are a lot of things that government are doing that might not be as physical as construction of a road. And for the media, you can judge the government based on well, how many kilometers of road have been constructed, um, how many schools have been built. There are so many other things you are doing. Even the education sector, where we are insisting that from primary to secondary school is free. Then in the university, we have increased your bursary, we have increased scholarship, and once you get the first class and you have a state, you are entitled to the study of the anywhere in the world. Um, and it, 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 it's 5 million naira a year. Uh, last year, we had 34 uh, first class students that were doing that scholarship. Uh, we are compiling more for this year. So we have various policy skills to ensure that as a child, you can't, you must, uh, uh, money should not stop you from attaining your, your, your potential. But there are things that people um, do not see. These are the things that people cannot measure um, by coming to the data and say, ah, that will work. Now, who said that? I'm not here just to tell you about vision, prospects and challenges that this year has taken over. I also have the intention to discuss some of the communication challenges we face in the difficult assignments we have given ourselves. From my experience, the economic strategy we have undertaken are risky. 
takes time and not often easy to communicate. I always knew that we needed to have short, medium, and long term plans. However, when the short and medium term plans, then we put them a program that we've seen at present day, the most significant aspect of our vision and long term. The project I refer to be our mega in nature in the greatest potential the best right of the state. More Those are the uh, the impact uh, of the To build a power plant, for instance, is not an easy project. There are different phases from ranging from free feasibility, feasibility, parental closure, APC bids, and site construction. This is the summary of the phases. Each phase has a sub phase activity. It's a rigid process, takes time, and has so many dependencies, some of which are not under anybody's control. It does not matter whether it's a joint venture partnership or a direct project investment, like what we My experience at the launch of the Wally Joshua Park, amongst several other sites, I don't give an example of what happened at the Wally Joshua Park. Three years ago, we organized a stakeholder engagement, an important step towards analyzing this project. We presented the project and asked for public input to enable the master planners and other consultants to commence the shower. work. We knew, and I remember to say to the public audience, that this is just the beginning of a long process that could take years. I regret to say that I failed to lower public expectations, which expected site work to begin immediately. What happened was that we made a presentation like this, and by the next week, we were asking me, where are the uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the design of, of the project alone, this is at least two years. It has to be solid, it has to be EIA, and EIA does not take, it takes dry season and rainy season. You know, so many things are involved, even in the, in the planning process alone. Um, but when that did not happen, that is when they did not see who does that, the rumors of it, that we were not sincere. It, and the other rumor was that we don't chop the money meant for the project. All my financial explanations and analysis did not quite the moment. Since that experience, I have learned to be more guided and aware that some of the things we are doing usually take time. While it is the fact that the project management has strict timelines, the truth is that in several instances, the dependencies are outside your control and it is part of project delivery. That is wrong. The other is that as soon as public awareness are working, a different dynamic to solve it. You, and in this case we, are faced with multiple pressures to deliver immediately. The Asaba Airport, um, this is a shining example. Today, that airport is already taking passengers. So we started construction, and within three years, people were already passing us, but that airport is taking too long to construct. I don't know any airport that is constructed within three years in this world. Not even at best. But because what we later found out that the need for that export was like yet to day. But when we now started, the expectations became very high. People now say, oh, Asaba, Asaba is overdue. In fact, Asaba, Onitsha, today with that area, Oka, is overdue for an airport. And uh, it is that had the courage to start it. Um, but I'm happy that today people are appreciating the, the, the airport. The public takes no account of some of the problematic or necessary steps that have to be taken. Explanation and after explanation yields little speech. To what it matters, you find a band of violent critics bent on finding fault, doubting, questioning, and disbelieving everything government does. The forefathers build their reputation and influence on their ability to dread all negative things, most times more imagined than real. Uh, like when the first plane landed at the Safa Airport, uh, one reporter said that we used GSM. <laughs> we used GSM to land a plane in the Safa Airport. <laughs> uh, and of course, our friend, uh, Sahara reporter, carried it and was like, why this? Uh, I don't know if it's for you, GSM or something. Is reporter here? <laughs> now, they are smart enough to feed off the long held cynicism of past leaders of government to misinform the people. Now, in some instances, I find the press as soft to this conversion. 
principles of fact checking, balance, fairness, and objectivity are held in privilege. My position is not necessary to antagonize anyone, but to put on the table an issue of pressing importance based on my experience over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand for free speech and will do anything to encourage and defend it. I also stand for objective criticism. Objective criticism can sometimes be unpleasant, but is usually aimed at correcting as well as assisting the daily of our society. As a government that understands the values of objective criticism, I encourage our officials to keep an open door and to be willing to engage in education and informing the public. We have taken steps to open all sorts of windows for interaction. Let me digress at, at, at this point. Now, in the media, we have the headquarters. Newspaper, for instance, we have headquarters in Lagos, of the newspaper in Lagos, where you have the editors, assistant editors, um, and the printing, and all that done. Then we have, in our end, mainly the reporters. What we have found as one of the reasons why there is this disinformation or disinformation or whatever we have been is the problem at the stage of the reporters. Two problems. I'm sorry, I have to say that like I said, I take care of them. Two problems. One, we have some reporters that are not educated. Some are just in the secondary school holders who did not go, who have not even bothered to build themselves up in journalism. They did not go to any journalism school, not, they just carry pen and paper and they are reporting. Two, we have the problem of many reporters are either underpaid or they are not paid at all. I'm sorry about that. I don't think they did it. Or is that the of this? They are either underpaid or they are not paid at all. And of course, when you are not paid at all, what happens? You become hungry. You cannot feed yourself. You cannot feed yourself, you become hungry. When you are hungry, you are angry. When you are angry, you are hostile. <laughs> <laughs> you are hostile. You want to draw attention. And the best way to draw attention, when the government attention, is to write something that is not correct. Ah, they will call you now. Then the chief press secretary, the commissioner for information, or the governor, or the consular consul, ah, the boy, come, what happened? Ah, sorry, 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 I don't want to go out with him. Uh, okay, take. So, what I'm seeing here is that for proper reports to get to where they are processed and published, I want to appeal that employers you pay the reporters enough for them not to be distracted, for them not to send negative or false stories. It, it is very important. Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, it is very important if you consider this, this, this problem. The hunger and poverty at that level is quite high. Some newspapers pay, I mean, but some are not, they don't pay at all. And the argument is that ah, after all, they give you money there. Mm -hmm. So that's enough. That's enough. Uh, uh, all that feel that uh, uh, publishers and uh, promoters of with uh, other newspaper houses or in the media to pay their reporters uh, adequately. As the governor, I gave the town hall meetings as regularly as I can. They are on central and on speaker. We have a highly interactive government website. We have a state website that um, uh, had some problems for some time, but we are trying to revive it now. And we have our SMS center for the same any request of government officials to speak the government with our assurance of reply within 48 hours. We do all this because we can realize that we will be shortchanging the people ourselves if we do not respond to response claims to what we are doing. If the press are sometimes not entirely of all to some aspects of our future, the continuous of the social media as means of communication is another matter. The internet being an open or regulated environment is also available for terrible activities. At the same time, I will also concede that the social media is also a platform for great good. However, being a tool available to anyone, it can become a contest of agenda ready from the good to the past. 
depends on what the driver is interested in, he publishes whatever he passes. If he stands for truth, he puts it in open space. If he's interested in falsehood, he does likewise. The interesting thing is that there is no shortage of believers. What applies to the individual bloggers can be said for any of the online portals. Indeed, for example, it appeared that the particular portal was a source of news for the things that were going on in the area, which quoted freely from what he posted. In the circuit to no end, I am able to find an administration and be victim of vicious propaganda by this portal. Nevertheless, the recent times, I have noticed that the print and electronic media have declined the print use of materials from this source. That is good, because relying on the media of doubtful credibility does the press greater harm. As far as I'm concerned, one major shortcoming in the use of the internet as a source of information is the lack of legal remedy for this unjustifiably in the media. I'll give you an example. I, 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 was, I was coming into a suburb um, one day, I, there was an accident. You know, we, we explained the accident between um, the car bus driver got at the Okada Rider. The senior officer tried to avoid the Okada Rider and they ran into the bush. So I told my convoy to stop, to go and rescue um, the, the vehicle that has entered the bush. And we did, we rescued. Two hours later, it was on the that <laughs> 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 uh, we had uh, uh, we had caused an accident, we had run over to help us now ago. Unfortunately, they put a picture of um, uh, what do you call that? The uh, hillocks. The hillocks, they put a picture of a police hillocks <laughs> as being. Uh, by pilot vehicle. And unfortunately, the Hillos also has a police number. <laughs> but you see, not many people will look at such details. All they have read is that I have caused an accident. So why I stopped to rescue the victims of the uh, disaster. Uh, and of course, now, you see, where such things happen, when you try to correct it, maybe about less than 20% of persons will believe you. About 70 or 80 do not believe. It is the first one that believes. And that's why it's related to the first one. Okay, so let's talk. Now, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, one video should come in the end of the internet as a source of information is the lack of legal remedy for those who are aspiring to the I would like to see a reform that allows legal protection of any of the people and the possible wherever the portal is registered around the world. Uh, it is my view that not having such legal reports has left highly exposed persons like me and other vulnerable, and that is unfair. And also legal actions have been taken. Um, another thing is that because some of the projects we are undertaking are by their nature big, it demanded enormous resources. Most times require more than one project cycle. In fact, if I might add more than three cycles, Especially as in recent years, contrary to our projection, our revenue base has declined. What they happened was that in prioritizing our, our spending, we slowed down on more regular projects, though no important, but we found necessary for plant effects on our economy. In saying this, I cannot pretend that our group is not for the review. As we move along, I have found that some of the things we assumed we are what people wanted needed to be changed. We have adopted our approach to meet new reality. This is the sort of thing that happens in a democratic and transparent government responsible and responsible to this. Imagine if the military were still in power, the attitude, the person and arbitrariness would have done more harm to society. It would have, I'm sure, on a mild personal position. When looking back at, at what we have achieved, I feel that there is no substitute for democratic government. There are witnesses in terms of decision making and the record progress because of the layers of due process involved. Yes, there is a sense in which we are seen as listening and responding more to the economy of people. In conclusion, as we continue to party democracy, the values of this operation become more generalized and separate. My value judgment is that comparing the state of our democratic institution today and 30 years ago will show many changes. 
I think of this is led, there's a constant fight to over the process. There is more participation of the people. The various players and institutions understand each other better and are more able to define their limits better. I envision that the next 20 years we will be better than what we have today. Why am I saying so? Because we're in a democratic era, even amongst our labels, we're able to think on ourselves. A week or two ago, I think one of my colleagues from the Northern States said the funds going to the Northern States is not enough. We should review the revenue formula. Which I agree with. I mean, many of us governors agree that we review the revenue formula. We think the 2 percent being taken by the federal government is too much of the federal government. We think we believe that the state and local governments will have more. Especially in the area of payment of uh, uh, salary. But it went to a certain part that is more sensitive, whether I'm a governor or not, that I will never agree with. And that is that there is a part of Nigeria that does not belong to a state. And that means that oil that is being gotten from the high sea should belong to the federal government. The question is what part of Nigeria, whether river or land, that does not belong to any state. They are just not. Whether river, whether the desert, land, sea, salt water, fresh water, whatever it is, high sea, low sea, river, lake, whatever, belongs to a certain state. And whatever resources is found there also belongs to the state, created to that particular state. I'm sure if you find gold in the chat with it, somebody will say the chat about gold in the state. So what we are saying is, yes, you can ask for a review of revenue formula, but you cannot say that some revenue coming to Nigeria <coughs> does not belong to any state. We know that every part of Nigeria belongs to the state. Whatever but the high seas are talking about, the, 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 the effects of, of uh, oil exploration and exploration in that high sea, the impact it makes on, on the, the, uh, the coastal people, you, you can never be imagined. You need to go to the coastal part of, of, of Delta the Escargos area, and you see the kind of devastation that has occurred in those areas. So people must not, uh, I want to plead, but even as leaders, we need to be very cautious in demanding for solutions. You agree, you have the right to say whatever you want to say, you have the right to demand. But don't make such demands that will bring crisis to Nigeria. All I have said gives me great confidence about our future, not to stand the challenge. In the years to come, new leaders will be led, and as I to report, in more dynamic ways, and hopefully it will get better. I am an optimist and believe strongly in Nigeria's spirit of perseverance, of grace under pressure. The role of the media in the future of our country is considerable. From safety agenda to information dissemination and education of the people, the media have enormous responsibilities. If the media fails, if the media fails, society is in peril. I have no doubt about this in my mind. Finally, I am going to make two additional comments in encouraging this school. One is the spirit of collaboration with this school, and I will announce that I have accepted your request for sponsorship of 10 female labor students over the next three years. And the women in media scholarship program. Secondly, I have an assignment for this school. The state government has shown the importance of reaching Nigerians in places where former mass computers are supposed to support an ongoing study on effective communication in the rural communities. <laughs> well, I, 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 what I'm requesting for now, I've um, said this, but let me explain. That's all.
a big challenge in every government today is being able to communicate your activities to rural people. And uh, that ability to do that communication, um, or inability to do it, brings about rumors. What was the rural community? Would I even mean only those people living in the city? But even those living in the town? The government, I would suggest, to make this relevant as an other study in a specific location. For instance, in coastal areas, conditional experts will examine the findings at a workshop dedicated to rural communication. The other one is rumor. How do that is going to study the prevalence of rumor in society as for the country? Why does this spread? and what can be done to call it, uh, that what I'm saying. I would like to see this study started this year, all the school makes it this available to me. We are able to support this study financially. And uh, so it's on that note, I want to thank everyone that has come here. And uh, I hope to in the space of discussion, we can get some people more